What's going on everybody? 2am here. You can spice up your character's clothes in just a few minutes by using this technique to quickly add some folds. So here we have a character with long baggy sleeves. Let's go ahead and add some details to it. So this top has a subdivision modifier on it. Uh, let's keep that for now while we add crease to the object. I'm going to alt left click on this edge loop of the cuff and then shift E and drag to the right. Here it is again, we don't want it to be smooth here, so we shift E and drag our mouse to the right. So do this for any parts of the clothes where you don't want it to be smooth. Increasing the crease value in those spots will cancel out the subdivision surface modifier. For the next steps, we'll have to apply the subdivision surface modifier, so move on when you're ready. I want to create a fold around here where gravity will bunch all of this material up. Here it feels like we need to add an extra line of edges to get more detail first. So I alt left click, select the loop, bring it up a little, Control R and loop cut under it, and I scale up that loop and make it bigger. I alt left click the loop above it, I scale it down and bring it down and right towards the gravity. And that's pretty much it, you have a fold. Now it won't look like much yet because you've just prepared the mesh, we still have to add the details later. But first let's create another type of fold. This next type of fold is focused in a certain area rather than all around the loop. So here I'll use a knife tool and I want to start in this corner. Then I'll left click in between these edges like so. I'm going to detail it by making the curve go up and down. And I'm going to rotate my uh, view here a little and finish at the opposite corner. Just start and end at the corners so that you can keep everything with tries and quads. Just press enter to commit your changes with a knife tool. I'll press W to switch over to my select tool. The fold I just created will be selected so I'm just gonna G and grab it, drag it out a bit. Then I'll select a few vertices above it and push them inwards to create an indent of the fold. Now let's add some lines. For this example, I'm using grease pencil line art. So to go over that real quick, I've put all of my meshes that need line art into one collection. And then I added a grease pencil stroke object to my scene. I then added a line art modifier to that grease pencil object. And for this, we've set the collection to whatever we put all of our meshes in. Set the layer to lines, material to black, thickness, you play around with it until you get the thickness that you want, and then the edge types will just be contour and edge marks. The edge marks option will allow us to use freestyle edges, which will allow us to put lines on any edges that we want. So you'll find this in edge mark freestyle edge. If you want, right click it so that you can add it to your quick favorites menu, which is accessed by Q. So let's do this by selecting vertices where there's an indent in the folds and use a mark freestyle edge action. And here I'm only going to select a few and mark freestyle edge there. And that's how you can easily create lines that match your outline wherever you want as long as there's edges. Now we can create as many folds as we want. Um, for anime art styles, usually it's limited to just a few folds. It doesn't really need to get too detailed. So let's create a couple here on the cuff and that should be good for that portion of the top. So here it is with just some procedural tune shading. One thing you can always do is combine tune shading with drawn on shadows in the textures. If you're only using two tones, you can even have it so that the procedural shadows don't stack onto the drawn on shadows. You can do this of course by UV unwrapping the mesh and then texture painting in the shadow details that you want. And here we see when the procedural shadows overlap the shadows that you painted in. It's still the same shadow color thanks to our shader setup. And it's really not complicated, it's just that the procedural shadow is the same color as the textured shadow, so it doesn't matter when it overlaps. One disclaimer for this video though is that Grease Pencil obviously doesn't carry over if you're exporting to something else. For this project, we're just going to be creating some animations within Blender itself, and so uh, line art using Grease Pencil is going to be fine. So for game engines and live models, you just use the usual solutions like Solidify for the outlines, and you can just draw lines into the texture where the freestyle edge lines would have been. For those that are following the Anime Girl from Scratch series, that's still going to be ongoing. We'll definitely finish that up. Sorry that it's been quite some time since the last one. Like this stuff is recorded, but you know, sometimes it just takes me a long time to get to editing it. But in the meantime, I want to release smaller videos and tips like this. So hope you don't mind and I'll see you in the next one. Good night.